If you have your Bibles, uh, if you would open up to Genesis, the 32nd chapter. If you if you can't find Genesis, please meet us at Bible study. Amen. Genesis, the 32nd chapter. You shouldn't have to look at the table of contents. If you got a good Bible, it's the first book. Amen. Genesis 32, we're going to just read three verses, 24, 25, and 26, amen. amen. We're not going to be here long, we're not going to prolong the time, but we're going to give you a word, amen, amen. that we believe will be helpful to you, that you'll be able to carry from this place, amen, and make it a Sunday, amen. If you have it, stand on your feet and let's read these verses together. Genesis 32, 24. And the Bible says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go. Except thou bless me. Amen. Amen. Except thou bless me. That is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in God's presence. And let us pray. My Father and my God, I come right now, Father God, just to ask for strength. Father God, I just say thank you for allowing me the privilege once again to stand behind this sacred desk. Father God, we certainly feel your spirit in this place, and we would ask that you would turn it into sacred space. Father God, allow the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. And we pray these things in Jesus' name and church city. Amen. Now, beloved, for, for the brief time that I have, I'm going to just talk for a few moments for the subject or the topic or the theme. Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Look at somebody and say, don't let go. No matter how hard it gets. Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Now, if we look at uh, Jacob's life, uh, Jacob was named Jacob, and Jacob means heel catcher. Amen. Means that Jacob like to hold on to things. And, and at his birth he was a twin and his older brother came out first and he wanted to be the firstborn to get the first blessing amen so he held on to Esau's heel uh, that lead, leads me to believe and I believe you understand that uh, Jacob kind of had what some church folk call the takeover spirit amen 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 Jacob had one of them spirits where Jacob wanted to be in charge of everything amen and Jacob would use his intellect for deception. But beloved, can I tell you something? Uh, sometimes, uh, see, Jacob would use what he knew to try to get where he wanted to be. And we, we have some saints like that that uh, try to use and manipulate their way to get what they want. But beloved, let me, let me tell you something. Sometimes the destination is not worth what you lose trying to get there. Amen. Uh, when you give up your integrity, Go ahead. when you give up your peace, My Lord. Uh, when you give up your humility, it's not worth it, uh, even if you get what you want. Amen. So, uh, in the Bible, we know that Esau was preferred by Isaac, and Jacob was preferred by Rebekah. Uh, and Esau was supposed to get the firstborn's blessing. But what happened was that Jacob and Rebekah pulled a con game on Isaac and, 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 and tricked him out of Esau's inheritance. Right. Uh, we're not going to go into details on that. Y'all already know the story. Amen. Y'all know what happened. He, he, he dressed up like Esau and put on a, 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 a yeah, some goat skin. Amen. And, and, and Isaac felt the goat skin and thought it was Esau because it was hairy. Amen. And, 
So, so <laughs> Jacob used deception yes. to get what he wanted and to get Esau's inheritance. Yes. But beloved, let me tell you something. There's a price to pay when you get something that don't belong to you. And these things happen in chapter 28. But if we fast forward to chapter 32 where our text comes from, uh, we find out a whole lot happens in those four chapters. In fact, 20 years pass between chapter 28 and chapter 32. That's right, uh, and here's what happened. See, Jacob got the inheritance, but by getting the inheritance, he was chased out of town. Uh, uh, see, see, Jacob had the blessing, but when he left, he didn't have anything else. See, he was homeless and alone. He didn't have no more bed and no more breakfast. And right then, he had a rock for a pillow. See, sometimes you give up a whole lot just to get a rock. Come on, Come on. Come on. And Jacob had a present promise. Come on here. He had a future promise, but but he had a present problem. He had a guarantee, but he didn't have anything currently. Right. See, now, now, beloved, let me tell you something. There are three things that'll make you pray over your situation, your circumstance, no matter what. There's three things that'll make you pray over uh -huh. your situation. Go ahead. One of them is hunger. Oh, if you get hungry, you're going to pray about it, tell me. I, I know, I know what I'm talking about. I've been hungry, amen, but God always fed me. But but if you get hungry enough, you're going to pray on that thing. The second thing is fear. You get scared, you're going to pray then. I, I, know, I know I'm not the only one. Somebody said, Lord, please help me protect me from fear. Hunger and fear make you, make you pray. The other thing that make you pray is loneliness. You get by yourself. You don't have no family and friends to lean on. You'll pray about that too. Now, Jacob had all three of them things when he left. All three of them at the same time. But see, beloved, sometimes God's got to make you uncomfortable to get your attention. And the night that Jacob left his family, ran away, he had a dream. And in the dream, he saw Jacob's ladder and he saw angels ascending and descending. But at the top of the ladder, he saw God. That's right. Yes. And God gave him the promise, the perpetual promise that he had given Abraham and Isaac. And, and here's what's so amazing about that. Even though um, Jacob had messed up, Jacob had been deceitful, he still was entitled to the promise. My God. Well, that ought to make somebody shout right there because you know why in spite of... Of Jacob's dirty deed, he still got what God had for him. Yes, yes. And, and some of y'all, I'm gonna tell you, some of us, I should say, yes, some of us yes. might look over our lives and say how we see how we messed up, but God still gave us yes. what He promised us. Yes. Uh, see, see, God will still give you the blessing in spite of the mess that you got yourself into. Yes. So, if we fast forward those uh, four chapters and we go to chapter 32 in the text where we read together. Uh, Jacob is right back where he received the promise at, at Jacob's ladder. All right. He's right back there. Now, the first time he was there, he was running away from something because of something that he did. That's right. Now, this time in chapter 32, he's running away from something because of something somebody else did. That's right. Look at somebody and then look at your neighbor and say, what goes around comes around. What goes around comes around. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I know that's right. See, see, he did something to have to run. Then he got where he was going, and somebody did something to him. You can't keep doing folk wrong. You can't keep stabbing folk in the back. You can't keep talking about folk, and then don't expect it to come back around to you. So Jacob is fleeing from, from Laban, and his uncle, uh, and now he's caught between two desperate situations. He's leaving Laban, who's chasing him, and he's about to run back to Esau, who wants to kill him for stealing his birthright. So Jacob is in between these two places. And you know what props up then? That fear thing we were talking about. That's right. That's right. And see, he can't go back because of Laban, and he can't go forward because of Esau. That's right. So what does he do? Go ahead now. Send everybody away. Gets by itself. Right. See, believe, believe me, beloved, sometimes you just got to get by yourself. Right. Sometimes you just got to separate yourself 
from all the drama, all the nonsense, all the folk whispering in your ear, telling you what to do, telling you what not to do. Sometimes you just got to get a quiet space. I don't care if you have to go in your closet, in your basement, or in your attic. Sometimes you just need to be by yourself for a few minutes so you can get your own mind right. And sometimes you got to get by yourself because that's when God can speak to you. And what will happen is when you get by yourself, you'll think you're by yourself and God will send an angel to talk to you. Amen. So the Bible tells us that in his solitude, then Jacob has a visitor. And watch this, beloved. The visitor doesn't come to comfort him. The visitor comes to fight him. That's right. Uh-oh. See, see, every angel that God sent to you ain't, ain't gonna be agreeing with you. Agreeing and a good one. That's right, Every angel that God sends your way is not gonna speak softly and tenderly to you. Sometimes God is gonna send an angel to tell you where you're supposed to be, put you in your place, and tell you in no uncertain terms, you done messed up and you need to figure it out and get yourself together. Y'all looking for angels to whisper, it's going to be all right, baby. It's going to be okay. Sometimes that ain't the angel that God sent. Sometimes that's the devil telling you to keep going in the direction that's leading you to hell. And God will send an angel to say, get yourself together. Figure that thing out. An angel will just tell you the truth and you got to deal with it. Bible says that the angel and, and Jacob wrestled until daybreak. My God. Go ahead. And see, the good thing about that is there's an expiration date on your wrestling. Amen. There's an expiration date on your problems. That's right. You're going to have to submit in due time. That's right. But God will make it so you'll be halted from fighting uh-huh. and you'll have to surrender to his will. My Lord. All right. Watch this. The Bible says that the angel touched the hollow of his thigh. Somebody should have shouted right there. You know why? Because see, God can touch you in a place, touch you in a way that you'll realize you're not in control. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Let me break it down. See, see, sometimes God will put you flat on your back where the only way you can look is up. Then God will get your attention. Sometimes God got to give you some sickness in order for you to understand this is not something that I can do by myself. I need some help. Jacob, when Jacob realizes that he's not in control, Elder Keith, uh, Pastor Keith, when he realizes that he's no longer in control, that's when uh, Jacob holds on. That's when he holds on. Uh And Jacob says, in the text, Jacob says, I won't let go till you bless me. I feel like preaching right now. I won't let go until you bless me. See, see, uh, because in this lesson, can I tell you something? In this lesson, there's three types of saints. Three types of saints. Wait a minute. Let me write this down. Go ahead. (laughs) There's three types of saints. There are those saints who still wrestling with God. That's, that's the ones in verse 24. They still wrestling with God because they think they're smarter than God. They think they can do this thing on their own. So they're going to wrestle with God until they figure they can out-wrestle God. And, and, and when God gets tired, they're going to get their way. But that's not how, ever how it works out. But there's some saints that's still doing that. They're still wrestling with God. They're still in verse 24. See, they might be going through something that God has ordained to change them, but they they still wrestling with it first. And then there's the second type of saint. Those that's the saint who God has stopped you from wrestling. That's when God changes something in your life where you can't fight no more. That's when God, um, when you trying to hold on to the man, God tell the man to leave. You trying to do everything you can to keep boo boo. And Boo Boo walk away and get with Rashida anyway. Lord, 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 Lord. Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. 
Ain't nothing you can do about it. So God will stop you from wrestling, from being with somebody that God wants to let, wants you to let them walk away. Them, them saints is in verse 25. They still wrestling with God. And then God had to do something to them to, to halt that wrestling. Work it, Lord. Work it. Go ahead. And then there's the saints in verse 26. Uh-huh. Those who are holding on. Yeah. Holding on to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. See, see, when you already been through the wrestling part. And you've already been to the part where God spoke to you and God changed your situation and your circumstance. Then you get to the point where you just got to hold on. Because you know that God is going to deliver you into what you're supposed to have been to when you was in verse 25 and 24. But now God is going to put you in a place where because you're holding on, you're going to go where God takes you and not where you're trying to go. And if you look at the text, in verse 28, I mean chapter 28, uh, we know about, we learn about Jacob, and Jacob's name means heel catcher. So when Jacob is born, he's holding on to something. That's right. Yeah. Oh my God. Go ahead, doctor. Oh, yeah. You may go somewhere. I know. Go ahead. Now, go ahead, he's at the pivotal point in his life where somebody's chasing him and he's about to run into somebody who has danger for him ahead. Lord have mercy. Huh. So the only thing he can do. Is hold on to God. Can't go forward, can't go backwards, and we got to get to the point where we realize we can't do anything or go anywhere without holding on to God. Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah. I know you're right. <laughs> I know I've got some saints in here who done stop wrestling with God. You're not transitioning no more from being wrestling and being laid up. Now you're holding on because you know that God has something for you that's better than what you have for yourself. I wish you took it. Just look at somebody and just tell them, say, don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. See, you got to hold on. You can't let go. You got to hold on. I-, I pray today that you don't let go even when you're burdened. Don't let go even when you're discouraged and don't let go when you're disappointed and don't let go when you're confused and don't let go, Pastor Keith, when you're angry and don't let go when you're scared and don't let go when them bills are due, God bless you. Don't let go when your credit won't get it and don't let go when the children acting up and and you're sick and you're crying all night long. Don't let go. Even when you feel like giving up, don't let go. Don't let go when your enemies have you surrounded. Just hold on until your blessing comes. Hold on until your blessing comes. See, I haven't been perfect, but I'm going to hold on. I made some mistakes, but I'm going to hold on. I fell out of favor, but I'm going to hold on. You know what? I tried to do it my way, but I'm going to hold on. And uh, my blessing is coming. Look at somebody tell me, my blessing is coming. My blessing is coming. I got disconnected, but I'm going to hold on. I've been mistreated. I've been talked about, but I'm going to hold on. Because my blessing is coming. If you believe it, give God some praise. If you're still holding on, give God some praise in this place. Uh, Jacob's end wasn't what he thought it was going to be. See, uh, he, he thought he was going to end up in a different way. He thought he was going to get his way, but he was hurt in the wrestling match. Yes, he was. Mm. Go ahead, Pastor. That's what happens when we go against God's will. We get bruised. We get scars. Jacob is hurt, but he's holding on. And Jacob said, I'm not letting go until you bless me. Jacob has a dislocated hip, but he not letting go. That's right. Uh, I wish we had some saints in here that will walk away with a limp, but holding on to Jesus. Holding on to Jesus because there is no way that you can get it by yourself. You gotta hold on. Hold on. Hold on to Jesus. Bible 
Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But my God delivers them out of them all. Just as long as you hold on, hold to his hand. Till God's unchanging hand. I wish I had some witnesses in me. I wish I had two or three folk who had been through some fire. Been through the storm. I wish I had some folk who been through the mess. But got through. Because you held on to God's unchanging hand. Hey! Hey! Won't he do it? God's got a blessing to put your name on it. God's got a blessing and it's just for you. God's going to get you through as long as you hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I'm going to hold on till I get through. Give God some praise in this place. Time is still 